Once you learn what you're doing in PLC programming, you're going to practice this and do a few projects and you're going to get to a point where honestly these programs feel like they're writing themselves. Um, whenever, before I retired, whenever I used to write a program, you know, I would have like three of my screens in front of me on my computer. One of them would either be showing a movie or music videos. I would be programming on one and I would have my third open as reference. Uh, giving me things like I.O. list and process flows and things like that that I needed to refer to while I was writing the program. Or I'd be going back and forth. You know, I'd have like HMI on one screen and PLC on the other. And I'd be going back and forth between those two, you know, singing along with my music videos the whole time or paying attention to the movie. And, you know, it that sounds kind of like maybe a little extreme or something, but... You know, honestly, PLC programming, when you learn how to flow it out correctly and you learn a good system for putting your logic down, you would be surprised how much of a PLC programming is really just, I mean, brainless effort. It's really just kind of sitting there and doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, I want to show you the way that I lay out a PLC program and the way that I write the program because I can write a PLC program about three or five times faster than most people do. Um, from watching other programmers, you know, people who have been doing this for a while and, you know, knowing how long these guys take, um, it's insane. I've programmed entire systems in a day or two, okay? Uh, we're not talking about like necessarily creating all the graphics for an HMI, but as far as the PLC program itself, like one or two days and done. So I want to show you the easy way to do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to walk you through that, showing you just the most basic little simple nonsensical system that only has what, six IO you know, uh, I think it's got like, you know, two outputs or, yeah, one output and five inputs, okay? So, you know, really, really simple little program. It's, it's a complete joke, but I'm just going to use this to show you how uh, I approach a program. So what we're starting here, and I just literally typed this out on Notepad, is just what I call an I.O. list, okay? So as a PLC programmer, if I'm going to get started programming, the bare necessity, like I don't need to have everything from the very start, but I at least need to know what the IO is. What are all the signals coming into my PLC? What are all the signals going out of my PLC? What are all those devices that are going to be hooked up to my IO modules? As long as you give me that, I don't need to know what the system is what it does, how it works, what the different, you know, uh, sequences and processes are. I don't need any of that. I can already start working on this program and get quite a bit done if I just have the I.O. list, okay? So right now, we're starting with the I.O. list, and I'm just going to start laying this thing out and jump in and show you what I do. So. Here we go, I'm jumping into 500 and creating a quick program. I'm already in there. And the first thing I need to do is start setting up my IO. So I'm going to pretend that this is a bigger program than it really is. And I'm going to create two new program files. One's going to be analog IO and the other one's going to be digi io okay so my digitals are going to be in one my analogs are going to be in another and let me just go ahead and create two extra rungs in this main ladder two here and i'm going to throw in some random instruction right click change the instruction type to a JSR and I'm going to go ahead and point that to U colon 3 and I'm going to 
Now let's go ahead and move that up to this top rung and copy that, paste it, create an identical instruction, and this is going to call U4. Okay, um, let's get rid of that. All right, now I've got those two uh, jump subroutines to my two IOs, and I'm going to go ahead and add one more program while I'm at it. Actually, let's add a couple. I'll add one for alarms, and I will add one more for control logic. Okay, so now I've got uh, five and six. I'm going to copy that wrong and paste it a couple of times. We're going to call five and call six. Okay, so three, four, five, and six are all getting called. Perfect. Let's jump into four, or actually I'll just go ahead and jump into three and start with my analogs. So I'm going to create one rung, and I really only have one analog input, and that's my speed sensor over here, okay? So first thing I know I'm going to need, I'm just going to create some instruction and change the instruction type, and that's going to become a scale with parameters. And my input for this um, I don't really have my input channels or anything, and I don't even have my I.O. devices laid out in this program. So uh, I can go ahead and just put a, a holder in there, a placeholder in there, and put that as like N7 colon 0. And now I've got just a dummy signal for this input device. The input minimum is going to be 0, the maximum 16383, so I'm going to use P, uh, PID scaling for this. And um, I don't have a real speed sensor, obviously, so I don't know what the actual scaled minimum and maximum are. But let's just pretend that it's going to be something like 0 to 100 RPMs. And then I'm going to output that somewhere. Um, I can output that to, uh, let's just give it a real, and let's make it F8 colon 0, okay? And that will be my speed RPM scaled value, okay? Good enough. So now I've got the calculation for that uh, input coming in. And really, I can just walk away from that because uh, I'm done with scaling that analog input. Uh, so for now, I don't really have anything else to do with that. Let's go into my digital I.O. And uh, I've got five different things here. So I'll go ahead and create five rungs. And let's start looking at these. The first one is a start button. And again, I do not, uh, I'm not going to map these two input channels right now just because I don't know where they're going to end up in the end. And for simulation purposes, I'm going to want these as bits. So I'm just going to start laying down bit addresses. B3 colon 0 slash O. And that's going to be temp start button sim. Okay, done. And let's copy that instruction, two, three, four. And uh, I'm going to copy out that description, change this to a one. And that's going to become a stop button. Number two here is going to be a jog button. And number three is going to be our motor overload. And that leaves me with our motor. And that's an output. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on an output. And again, you know, I don't have uh, an output card on here yet. So I don't know where this is going to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on a bit for now. B304. And that's going to be temporary motor sim. Got it? Okay, now uh, that I've got these uh, bits in here, 
um, these input bits are going to need to be tied to program bits inside of my logic and I'm also going to want a program bit that's used to control my motor. So I'm going to bring down an OTE and I'm going to start putting in some more bits B3 colon O slash 5 and that's going to be my start button bit. So let's copy that instruction, paste it three times, and then just drop it on these next couple of lines. And let's copy that description as well, cancel that. And this is going to be six. And instead of start, stop, seven, that's our jog. Eight. And that's our motor overload. Okay. And let's bring one more examine if closed over here for our motor. That's going to be B309. And that's going to be our motor control bit. Perfect. Okay, so at this point, I've got all of my I.O. already brought into the program. All I had was an I.O. list. I've got all my I.O. in the program. But actually, I don't have to stop there. I've got more stuff I can do because you know what? Um, for this motor um, and for any output devices I have, I'm probably going to want HOAs. I'm probably going to want the operator to be able to control these things, put them in manual control mode, auto control mode, or leave them running in automatic, right? So come back into Program Files, New, and let's go ahead and create something called uh, maybe HOA Logic. Doesn't really matter what I call it. That's going to be number seven. Go back into Main, and let's put a call for U7. Okay, so now that's going to get called, and what was my motor control bit? That's B309, okay? So in here, this is where we're going to control B309. Let's go ahead and output energize B3 colon zero slash nine. And what's my logic to run that? Well, I want two different circumstances to run that. And the first circumstance is going to be uh, that we're actually in auto mode and the process is calling for it, okay? So, so I think we're up to B310. Yep, and that's going to be our motor run bit. Whoops, uh, I've got that in the wrong case. Let's try that again. Motor run, perfect. So we're either getting motor run or we're getting our jog button. Now let's look back into digital I.O. What was that jog button? That was B307. So let's copy that B307 and we're going to put that in right here. So if somebody is pressing the jog button, uh, we want to go ahead and run that. Okay, so at this point I've got two different cases. If we're in automatic and the motor run bit is being called, then we're going to energize the motor. Or if someone's pressing the jog button, we're going to run the motor. And I don't need something to tell the motor to stop because that's basically going to be handled by someone either letting go of the jog button or if we're in auto mode, that uh, logic is going to shut the motor off, okay? So we've got our HOAs logged in. Now, um, we can even go a step further. Um, whenever we have things like overloads, those are fault signals coming in. And whenever we have analog signals coming in, usually there's going to be uh, errors uh, or alarm conditions associated with those analogs. 
So if a value gets too high or too low, we want to trigger an alarm. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and create a couple of different alarms. Uh, let's go into my alarms. And I'm just going to create a, a few rungs here so I have something to work with. And the first thing I want to look at is if I get an overload. So that's B308. Let's go back into alarms and let's create a condition checking for B308. And in the event that that happens, we're going to go ahead and drop in a one shot. B3, I think we're up to 11. And I'm just going to call that an ONS. So if we get the overload bit, then we're going to trigger an alarm. So B3 colon 0 slash 12. Overload alarm trigger. Perfect. And let's copy that address, come down here and look for that address. And if we get B3012, that's going to need to fall in here. And that's going to control our alarm bit. So B3 colon 0 slash 13 overload alarm bit and that's going to be sustained whoa too many of those let's drop that in here b3013 let's just go ahead and copy and paste it in and that's going to also make sure that nobody's hitting an alarm reset so b3014 Alarm reset. Okay, so once we trigger that alarm, it's going to energize and keep itself energized until somebody hits a reset. Well, just like we have an alarm bit, we also want to have a notification bit. So let's go ahead and create that. Overload notify bit. And that bit is going to keep itself energized as long as we don't have an alarm reset or an alarm silence. So that's going to be B3. I think we're now up to 1 slash 0. And that's going to be uh, alarm silence. Okay. So... Now we've got one of our alarms all set up and remember we also have an analog input on our speed which is going to F80 and that speed goes from 0 to 100 RPMs. Well either one of those a low or high speed might in this system represent a problem. So let's create an under speed and over speed alarm for that F80. So we're going to look for a compare bit and we're going to take a less than and let's go ahead and look at that F80. And if it's less than, um, I could put a, a float or in here so that the operator could set this value, but I'm going to try to keep it simple. So I'm going to say if it's less than 10, and, you know, if we're stopped, obviously it should be less than 10, right? So we want to look for it to be less than 10 while this thing's supposed to be running. So we're going to look for that to be called in our alarm. Paste that in there. So if we're running and we're less than 10 RPMs, well, that could be a problem. Now, we don't know that immediately because as soon as we go into run mode, um, this thing's not instantly just going to fire off. So let's put a timer in here, T4 colon zero, and that's going to be 
motor low speed delay. Good enough. And let's give that a one second base and five seconds. And once that timer times down, so we're going to come down here, check for that timer, T4 colon zero slash done. And once that is timed out, we're going to one shot, B311, one, one, a one shot bit, and then we're going to trigger. And we're going to be triggering our alarm. So low speed alarm trigger. Perfect. So we've got that B312. Let's go ahead and examine that here. We want to put that in a branch because, of course, that's going to uh, be part of self-sustaining logic. We want to put an alarm reset condition in there next to it. And that's going to be B313. And that's our low speed alarm bit. Perfect. Copy that, paste it in here. Copy that whole rung, paste it here. And we're going to need a notify bit. So let me go ahead and copy that description. I think we're up to four now. There's our low speed notify bit. Self-sustaining. And we're going to take all four of those, copy them, come down here and paste them. And this time, instead of a less than, we're going to have a greater than. And we're going to say that the high end of this thing is 90. And you know what? I just noticed we're looking at the wrong bit here. So let's go back and uh, where was our control logic? Yeah, we want to be actually looking at our control bit on that alarm. So there we go. We are looking for not an overload condition, but we're looking for the motor to try to be running on both of those. Greater than 90, we're going to need a new alarm here. So that's going to be motor high speed delay. Otherwise, it can be a five second as well. And that's now going to be T41 down that we're looking at. And that's going to need, we're going to need a new one shot bit here. So that's going to be B315. Good. And instead of low speed alarm trigger, B316 is going to be a high speed alarm trigger. Copy that trigger address. Trigger, trigger, good. And now instead of our high speed alarm bit, or low speed alarm bit rather, I think we're up to seven. Paste that in. That's going to be a high speed alarm bit. Copy that address, paste it in here. And we've got our notify bit, which is going to be number eight high-speed notify bit and paste it in here. I can delete out that extra rung. I think that's the only extra rung I had. And uh, just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and verify my project before I go any further. Everything's good. Okay, so at this point, I've already got all my I.O. in. I've got some preliminary alarms set up. You know, there might be more alarms that have to do with process and sequence and things like that. 
but already I've got my alarm started and everything that just comes from the I.O. is in there. And I still don't have my process logic in. Um, obviously, this is a pretty simple start and stop kind of thing to control a motor. But let's go ahead and put in some process logic. So coming into program files, new. And this is going to be process logic. That's number eight, so let's give it a run. Let's give it a jump to subroutine so that it actually executes. That's always nice. And let me go into our digital I.O. here, and I'm going to copy out uh, these three rungs right here. I'm just going to copy those, come in here and paste them, and that's just going to be a note so that I remember what those bits are that I'm looking for. So I need to control my motor here. So let's go ahead and create a run for that. And that's going to be if somebody presses the start button. So we're going to look for this uh, B305 first of all. So if someone presses B305, then we're going to want a one shot to make sure that button is starting something but not maintaining control of it. So that's B3 colon 1 slash. Anyone remember what we were up to? I'm just going to go ahead and say 10 because I really don't remember. So there we go. We've got our one shot. And then we're going to go B3 1 11. And that's going to be motor trigger. Okay, so that B3111, we're going to look at right here. And that's going to be what controls our motor here. So uh, we're looking for that. Actually, that's not the bit we want because we've got HOA on here. So we're looking for the motor run bit right there. So go back into our process logic. And here's where we're going to energize that bit finally. Boom, there we go. And we want this thing to run all by itself. So let's put a hold in right there. And the only thing that's going to break that is somebody hitting the, the stop button. And rather than put a one shot and a trigger, I'm just going to give that stop button direct control. So let's take our stop button bit and examine that right there. And just like that, let's verify it. Okay, so take a look at this program here. We've got our main program, which is jumping to the subroutines for all the different areas of the program that we've got. We've got our analog input coming in and already scaled. We've got our digital inputs coming in and already associated with bits. We've got our bit uh, right here associated with our digital output, which is our, going to be our motor. We've got an alarm set up for the overload, plus we've got an overspeed and underspeed alarms for our motor. We've got uh, we don't have any control logic. I think I was going to put that uh, process logic in there and I ended up creating another routine for it. So it uh, probably makes sense for that to be in the place we already created. So let's go ahead and delete that process logic. Go back into main. Just a little light housekeeping. So yeah, we've got uh, all of the logic in here that actually runs our system. It makes the, the motor run when somebody hits the motor button. And a little bit more housekeeping. We can delete those runs out of there. They're not doing anything. Verify our project again. Okay. And uh, we've got our HOA logic in here as well. So at that point, you know, that is all the stuff that you can get done just from your I.O. list. All right. And, you know, I'm kind of fumbling around in it a little bit and I'm distracted and I'm talking to you and explaining everything that I'm doing rather than just locking in and, you know, copy and pasting everything, you know, all the way through. 
And, you know, as you saw, once I get one alarm in there, I can copy that alarm and paste it a hundred times and then just go back and change the bits and things like that. So even though this is a small, simple program, for a large program, you can see once you get most of these circuits created once, you know, you just go and copy and paste them a hundred times, tweak the bits. And even though it's a big program with a hundred or two hundred or three hundred I.O. points, you can get all of that stuff in there. You can get all those alarms, all those HOAs created, and that's with nothing but an I.O. list. So you imagine if I got a project tomorrow morning and I was going to start on that project, if I sat down at my desk for eight hours, you know, can you imagine by the end of the day, all my I.O. is done, I've probably got you know, 90 or more percent of all my alarms done. All of my HOAs are done. What's left really? You know, at that point, I'm just kind of sitting around and waiting for somebody to give me a process flow and tell me, okay, you know, these are the sequences. These are the different modes of operation. These are the processes that run. This is how long this should run for. And these are the set points we need. And actually, even though that stuff is really kind of the meat of the PLC program, it's actually also the easiest part to write. Um, all of this stuff is what takes up time. And another thing that people kind of get stuck on and tripped up on, when you don't start by putting all of your I.O. in, um, you get into this place where you're trying to figure out, you know, you're trying to create some process logic and you don't have this device yet. So you have to go back and add that device. Then you go back to this. Then you put in an HOA for that device. And, you know, you're just kind of bouncing all around. The first thing you want to do when you're creating a PLC program, drop in every single bit of that IO. Once you've got all that IO in there and you've got all the bits set to control it in auto mode and you know, all the, you know, all that stuff's way, the way it needs to be. Um, the program is really easy to write. All of your addresses are defined. All of your bits are in there. You've even maybe got like an Excel cheat sheet opened up, you know, on some part of your screen that's keeping track of all your bit addresses. So you don't have to like copy them out and paste them in and then remember to delete them and things like that. Um, so yeah, even on a big project, by the end of one day, it's really not hard if you start with the I.O., create all the HOAs, create all the alarms, you know, and if you have everything well organized, broken up into different ladders or different program files or depending on what paradigm you're using to create your program, you know, whatever structures, data structures it has, break it up and, you know, separate all these different components. And I'm telling you, you know, when you when you save that process logic, those sequences and modes, when you save them for the end, man, you've already got your I.O., you've already got your alarms in there. Creating all that process logic, I mean, that's that's the, the meat of the program, but it's also the easiest part to write if you've got everything else around it done. So writing a program like this, this is what I do whenever I'm actually, you know, creating a real program. And, you know, a big program that's got, you know, 100, 200 or so I.O. points. I mean, honestly, I can get that thing done in under a week. Anytime, anytime. The only thing that might create some drag is if I have to do a lot of really fancy graphics for an HMI. Um, and, you know, graphics take time. There's, there's not a real easy way around that unless you've got like a library of uh, components and things like that that you can just drop in. But, you know, not even talking about HMI time right now, just PLC programming. There's not a lot of programs that would I, I can ever imagine taking more than about a month to write. And even a month, we're talking about, you know, this system has multiple PLCs, uh, you know, running a huge operation. 
But for most of your smaller systems, and when I say smaller systems, I mean less than 100 I.O. points, should never take you more than a week tops to get that whole program done. And the reason that speed is important is because time is money. The faster you can get this program done, the more programs you can get done by the end of the month, and the more money you have on the 30th, right? Kind of makes sense. Time is money. So the faster you can get this program written, the more money you can make and the earlier you can retire, okay? So speed, now I'm not trying to tell you that it's like, you know, it's a game or it's a race or something, but speed is really important when you understand that time is money. So, you know, think about these things and the next time you're writing a program, try to approach it like this. Get that IO in there top to bottom first and get that IO integrated into your program. You know, get your HOAs and get your alarms and get your interrupts and things like that all set up so that once you get to that process logic, you can think about the logic and just lay it out rather than having to stop and create all these other addresses and bits and delays and alarms and, you know, have all of the easy stuff done on the first day if possible if not two or three days, and I'm telling you, the rest of the program writes itself.